Hello and welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I'm your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz. Hello. And we are going to just dive right in. Very we are very happy to announce that our guest via Zoom is Penny Young Nance, President and CEO of Concerned Women for America. This was my goal to get you on the show, Penny. I, I've followed you for a long time and I was really excited that you acquiesced and, and assented and said that you would be on the show on No Apologies with us today. So thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, my great honor. I was happy to be on. I hear you all have a great, one of the most watched shows in North Dakota, Lynn Thornson, our state director of CWA, and Yana Mirdal speaks so highly. I was greatly honored to be asked. Well, thank you so much. Let's dive right in. I've got a couple of questions for you. First of all, we watched as President Trump was the most pro-life president in our lifetimes, and he made a lot of gains against abortion. But now that President Biden has taken office, all of a sudden, it feels like we're backsliding. Would you agree? Yes, but it's, it's a little bit... Um... It's a little bit more nuanced than that. Of course, President Trump appointed over 200 and uh, I think 230 pro-life judges, including three Supreme Court justices. Uh, we will have the Dobbs case that will, will come up next year that I think will be very instrumental in taking on the issue of abortion, taking on Roe v. Wade, and uh, giving states more ability to uh, make decisions on what their state laws are going to be on abortion. Uh, but what we have seen and what you, what you are, are right on about it, it is acutely painful to see the floodgates of our federal dollars being opened up to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is now receiving 19 times more funds under Joe Biden than they did under um, President Obama. I'm not even talking about President wow. Trump. President wow. Trump cut $60 million out of the half billion that Planned Parenthood is receiving. Now Planned Parenthood is receiving about $480 billion of our tax money. When you add in all the COVID money and all the multiple uh, slush funds that they're able to use. And that equates, that's important because it equates to lost lives. So Although the, the amount of money is shocking, the fact that they change the law is not shocking. It happens back and forth, depending on who's in charge of our federal government. The good Great. news is we have all these, these judges in place. That's important. But also what happens in, in this kind of environment is the states tend to step up. And we're seeing that in 2021, there's been 83 pro-life laws passed in the states, over 560 introduced. So we are seeing the states um, stake out their ground and prepare for their ability to actually move forward in protecting life um, as applies to, as, as their um, inhabitants, their citizens uh, choose. So there's a lot happening on the issue of abortion, but I, elections have consequences. And President Trump was one of the most pro, if not the pro-life president in U.S. history. All the personnel he chose that deals with the issue were pro-life. He kept funding to Planned Parenthood. He allowed pro-life pregnancy centers to engage in health care and to help women under Title X. He was a very consistent um, uh, arbiter and, and proponent of life. And I look forward to the day when we have that happen again. We have another pro-life president because we will lose babies because of the Biden-Harris administration. That is, a, that is a staggering amount of money to plan for. Yes. That's shocking to even hear that. And we knew it, but hearing the number surprising. was... surprising. Yeah, that was surprising, too. Uh, now, we also are dealing with right now an onslaught. The NEA, these unions, all of a sudden they are pushing critical race theory. And I know Concerned Women for America has made a stand on it. What should regular <laughs> yet rank and file people and, and uh, Concerned Women for America across the United States, what can we do? Well, first off, you need to understand, and we have a great resource on critical race theory on our website that just gives you sort of, because it's a very complicated issue, and by the way, the left wants it to be complicated, but here's the bottom line. It is divisive, and it is uh, basically, it is, it is um, Marxist in that 
it's division, it's not using class, it's using race. And it is completely the antithesis of the Christian worldview, which is Galatians 3. Male, female, Jew, Greek, slave free, we are all one in Christ. Our identity, no matter who we are, no matter the color of our skin, no matter our politics, no matter where we are, our economic status, as Christians, our identity must first be in Christ and anything else has to be sublimated to subjugated to that claim even the really good things like being a mother or being a, a wife or being in my case a Republican all those things have to come underneath and be in the right order when you get things out of order when you re-raise this false virtue um, of, of really a racist ideology you hurt kids and that is what we're seeing this this ideology that is uh being taught in schools and parents are rightly objecting and they must now i was looking at your bio a little bit and it says you are a national authority on cultural children's and women's issues and we've talked a little bit about children and babies there and women's mm -hmm. issues as well um, it also said in your bio that you oversee more than 500,000. i was shocked to see that number two participating um, cwa members or concerned women for america mm -hmm. members across the country you have over 300 prayer action chapters and home teams and i had never heard of why WA before 50 young women for America yes and I think that number is even higher now that is just an exploding part of our grassroots demographic and I think it really is in reaction to uh, all this leftist ideology that is being pushed on them in schools including all the transgender ideology and all of that you have women standing up for the sanctity of life and standing up for the uniqueness and the dignity, inherent dignity of women. And so we, we're growing, I think it's something like 75 Young Women for America chapters around the country now. That is just fantastic. I love to hear stuff like that too. We've had an experience recently where we've talked to some younger people and we've been shocked and thrilled with how they actually <laughs> believe it just the correct things already too. It's exciting. Yeah, it's now, uh, when we come back, we're going to dovetail with that a little bit and talk a little mm -hmm. bit about girls and sports when we come back. Can we have you a holdover? All right, we'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit. 
plus Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. you got to know how to fold them if you want to hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. All right, we are back. It's no apologies, and we have Penny Young Nance, president and CEO of Concerned Women for America. And uh, a really good segment there. We are following up with another. Uh, Penny, welcome back. I wanted to touch back before we move on to women's sports. Um, I, I just think it's a very important point. The, when we're talking about critical race theory, and you brought it around to how it does fit into Christian teaching, Galatians 3 specifically, mm -hmm. you said. And I think, I think it's so important that people understand because there, there's a tendency. I think that there's a, a real pendulum swing in Christians mm -hmm. being engaged in politics and recognizing more and more that it, it is important to be engaged because it does change uh, our, our world and our society. Um, and the aspect that critical race theory moves us away uh, from Christian teachings. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, Martin Luther King Jr. judging someone or working with someone based on the content of their character sure is in line with Christ's teaching. Mm -hmm. Moving Amen. away that we must judge and have this entirely um, amoral, we'll say, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. means of viewing and interacting with people, I think takes us away from that. Uh, so I wanted to give you just maybe one more opportunity to clarify the importance of Christians uh, working toward Im improving and mm -hmm. responding to this critical race theory challenge that we have. Well, I mean, racial reconciliation is is right and correct, right? And you want to you want to love your brother. You can't love God and hate your brother, right? Those two things conflict. They're impossible. They cannot coexist. But it's different to atone for the sins of a, of the world. Only Jesus can do that, and we can live out our faith in a way in which we are loving and serving one another. Um, but also recognizing the inherent dignity. God made me this person. God made our little children in the bodies and the families that he chose for them. It, no one's, everyone's equal in the sight of God. Our founders said that. We just read our Declaration of Independence. Hopefully uh, everyone did on the 4th of July. And certainly these, our founders were very complicated people because they're sinners and, and as we are. But it's a whole nother situation in which you have a group of people, that, frankly, that are profiting very handsomely by teaching a false ideology and shaming a group of children. I want our school children to be taught that we are all equal in the sight of God and we must love and serve each other and, and be, be ye kind one to another, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you. We yeah. must all be sacrificially loving to each other, help giving each other a hand out, not because we've been shamed, but because we love. And it's, it's our duty to do that as believers, but it's also our duty to stand up for truth and righteousness and stand up for what God's principles are in this, which are right and good and true. Absolutely. And I think that's probably one of the most important things about conservatism is the respect for the dignity of the individual. Mm, that's yep. right. Go. You've got a question. Well, I think. well, I wanted to just talk a little, touch a little bit about this. In mm -hmm. our state, we had a transgender bill or women's sports bill go yes. uh, to the governor's desk. It passed in both houses, and then it was like left to languish and vetoed. It was vetoed. Yes. Yep. That's a and, shame. Yeah, it is. But I know that this is a very national topic right yeah. now. It's all over the place. And I would like your take on uh, women's sports and what Concerned Women for America is doing. You know, we're coming up on the, I think it's the 49th anniversary of Title IX. Mm -hmm. 
Um, before my time, even you had feminists, people to the way to the left of, of me and of Concern Women for America that fought for the equality of women in sports for us to be able to um, to be able to compete and to have equal standing to be have access to funds that were being used for men's sports, but not women's sports. And they came a long way and they worked hard and they won. And now all of a sudden they have been betrayed. We work um, uh, arm in arm with some very interesting women that we don't have a lot in common with um, called Women's Liberation Front. They're self-identified radical feminists. Many of them are bisexual or lesbians. And we don't agree on a lot, but we agree on the fact that there is inherent dignity in being a woman and that um, we recognize that and we embrace that. And when you take away the few little things that women were able to achieve through Title IX, their ability to play on sports teams, which we know now has great um, impact on women, on their health, on their ability to, you know, have uh, positive things to do in, in, in high school and elementary school, um, and is, is just a great leadership and, and team building is very important. And so this is being taken away from us. So if you can't compete, which we know that you know, men and women are not the same. We're fine with that. We think we're equal in, in every way, but physically there are some real differences and we, you know, we embrace those differences. That's fine, but let's not lie to ourselves about what this means for athletes. And when you have demoralized a whole group of women that, you know, runners and swimmers and athletes that cannot win when they're put up against men, and we see this happening over and over again to the point where we're having lawsuits around the country and are, are going to continue. We had the women's sports case in Connecticut, Selena Sol. Um, we, must, we must fight back and stand up for these women. And I am very disappointed in your governor. I'm very sad that he chose. Your version of the bill was the most stripped down version of the bill. It was only K through 12. It didn't even have to do with um, college sports, which I think is a, a miss. But you had apparently three votes um, short of an override. I hope you all can come back next year and correct that. Yeah, that was a very big dis disappointment. And you're right, it was stripped down be, but you know, by, by the perception of the necessity to get mm -hmm. something passed right. because well, something more aggressive still... would have had, had no chance. This came close. It was, it was, uh, it was a big miss uh, on our governor's part. There is no doubt about that. Well, I think you have an opportunity. It's not over. We're seeing these proliferate around the country. I mean, we we are, Doreen Denny of Concern Women for America was sort of this lone voice three years ago. And, uh, and it just grew. She was the person that was going on Capitol Hill and explaining to Capitol Hill staff that were young staff that what the term gender meant being, when it was being written into law by the left. And so we've had to come a long way. People have been educated and we are, we are growing and more and more states are putting into place these protections for women. And it's not just sports teams. We're talking about domestic violence shelters. We're talking about women incarcerated who have no rights and no ability to speak up for themselves. And we owe it to them to stand up for their safety and their privacy. Totally Perfect. agree with that. And Perfect. there's so many far-reaching effects. You're exactly right. Penny, thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule to talk to us here on No Apologies. We would love to have you back sometime. If there's right. something going on, we will let you thank know. You. All right. Thank, All right. thank you. Thank you, God bless. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. All right. Next up, we are going to have a segment I'm bringing on what is going on in Minneapolis with Black Lives Matter activists. I'm going to tell you. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. 
Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Yiro's, with the region's only Yiro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back. It's No Apologies, your after hours oasis of sanity. I'm your host, Rick Becker, and our co host, Lori Hintz. Good to be here. We've got some fun stuff yet to come. Yeah, on this fun show. stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I was checking things out, mm -hmm. and uh, BLM is still causing a ruckus yes. in Minnesota. And this isn't a, a today's news, but it's like about a week ago. Mm -hmm. So, pull up the first graphic. I saw this article uh, and then followed up with several additional articles, but here we see. Anti-police activists vow to disturb lawmakers at their oh homes. Oh my lord, that is not cool. No, it's oh, <laughs> oh. it is not cool at that all. That is oh. So the uh, here's the thing. We've and they're got, out of session, aren't they? Done with session. Yeah. So yeah, last week they they went out of session, and here's here's the thing. Um, the reason that BLM agitators, I mean activists, are uh, <laughs> right. are up in arms is because the legislature passed a bill that uh, they call the Public Safety uh, Budget Bill. So, I mean, you, you have to have one in the state, I guess, if you're going to have police. Now, of course, BLM probably doesn't want you to have police. Uh, however, they passed a bill, the governor signed it, and they are ticked. So I want to go over uh, a couple of things. There is a, uh, an, an activist that we've got on video here. And so go ahead and run the first part. Last night, it was not Republicans who were denying us the ability to demand justice. It was Democrats who agreed to support a policy that only favors policing and not the community. Last night, we saw the ugly truth of Democrats. We know the history of this country that Democrats refuse to even free black people. And that history is still hunting Democrats today. Yep. So they, they are They're turning on their own. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> and we've had the conversation before where the far left activists mm -hmm. will turn on a dime. I'm wait, they're you gonna, have said that. You I've said they're going to turn on Biden. Yep. They are turning. They're turning on Governor Waltz. Um, they, they're wow. turning on, on their own. They always do because you must there is zero tolerance right. for veering from exactly what the, extra, the far left extremists want. So they are turning on their own. Go ahead and play the next segment for me, please. The state of Minnesota has the worst economic disparities, housing disparities, education disparities, and so more. And when it came to police accountability, this state does not believe in the voices 
of the marginalized and oppressed, but instead believes in the oppressor, the police departments and law enforcement officials across the state. Those right. are the oppressors. Yep, they are. So the police are the oppressors. They, they, it ties into the first part of the segment we just showed you where um, he is saying that essentially Minnesota is, is, is racist and are, is oppressive and, with, and especially uh, Minneapolis and also the entire state. But I want to underscore the fact that this, these, these are areas that have been run by Democrats. Exactly. The people that the BLM activists support. And so I just want—I want to. Every time we have that opportunity, I'm going to bring it up because Show these me. inner cities have been run by Democrats, and they are so problematic. So I don't understand why you continue to go to the same people that are clearly and apparently, by your own words, causing the problems that you are claiming. Let's go to the third and final segment for this gentleman. We will continue to fight. We will continue to demand justice. We will continue to do what is necessary for our community to realize that. Many of these legislators are going home after this week. What they don't realize is they will not be going home to their homes peacefully because we will be coming to their homes. We will be demanding justice on their front lines. We will be making sure they understand the pain that exists in our communities. So this summer, I want people to know that we are taking our activism to the next stage, stage number two, when we realize we worked with the system, we tried to address it within the system, but we came back with nothing. But we are not going home with nothing. We will continue to demand justice by any means necessary. By any means necessary. Right. That sounds like a pretty awful threat to it's a it's a huge threat wow it is a huge threat and what i don't understand and i've got a couple more graphics how is it that this this person who is clearly an extremist right is clearly threatening um is one of those people that are advocating What's the it? tactics of blm which have been clearly problematic for minneapolis in the state of minnesota and he's saying that he's going to cause mobs to go out to legislators' homes. To their lawns. To their and was lawns. was he doing that at the Capitol? Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, I know. That's so, just... so here's what I don't understand. All right. Why, Shocking. Why are there not people counter-protesting and going to his house? Great point. Why not? Why not? If someone was going to be protesting on my lawn, I'm going to organize a counter protest yep. three times bigger yep. to protest on that person's lawn. It's it's nuts. Uh, um, That's a terrible threat though. It's I'm crazy. Just, I'm shocked. It's I absolutely shocked crazy. Would call for that. Pull up the next graphic, please. Now here we have, um, it says here, for Minneapolis protest leaders, no apologies over muscular demands for police reform. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that. So, so here's the thing. Now, back in, um, this is in April, this article. And what, what's it, what it's indicating is that prior to the uh, uh, judgment on the, uh, with, with Derek Chauvin, mm -hmm. this same person, this same agitator, was saying that if we don't get the verdict we want, there is going to be a problem. And he's advocating, he's advocating for that type of criminal activity. And it's phenomenal to me that that just goes um, sort of, it's, it's tolerated, it's accepted. What is going on, Minnesota? I know. So that was on April 24th. Okay. And now here, I wanna bring up something too. Here's, here's the reporting that we have. It, I know I'm, I'm playing a few different levels here, but keep in mind that this gentleman, I use the term loosely, is essentially advocating violence and is, is definitely advocating um, infringing a person's personal space. Right. However, the, the article, I want to read parts of it here. While the violence associated with some Black Lives Matter protests has drawn condemnation from many area residents and some conservative commentators, the activists say they're tired of waiting for the system to reform itself. So that in itself is interesting. Right. Some conservative, conservative commentators. commentators. Now, why would violent riots and protests not draw condemnation 
from all commentators, exactly. from all news outlets. In other words, the question is not why are the conservative ones pointing out the violence, why are the liberal ones not pointing out the violence? Great point. And I want to point out here, the demonstrators did not engage in violence or destructive activity in more than 93% of the more than 7,750 demonstrations nationwide during last summer. Okay, okay. so that sounds good. Right. I mean, 93% were not violent, which means 542 <laughs> of the protests were violent and destructive. Right. They are, they are, are apologists for BLM and the violence and destruction and terrorist tactics that they use because they're glossing over the fact that there were over 542 violent and destructive protests. Wow. In Minneapolis, it caused 500 million, half a billion dollars right. of damage in the city of Minneapolis, and you're gonna give these people that a pass. That doesn't even count how many people are no longer going to Minneapolis and the economic oh, downturn. No. That's it's, not even counting right. people not going there anymore. So back in this April story, this Jelani Hussein, mm -hmm. Jelani Hussein, um, did I say Jelani Hussein? Um, he said that he was pre uh, prepared for a protracted and personal battle on the front lines. He said, either we go home after getting a guilty verdict or we stay in the streets until we get justice by any means necessary. Oh, that was not And good. he asked, what's the value of property, he asked. It, it's usually insured. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, what, what is this measured against no, the black no, lives no, lost no, to no, systemic no. racism, except what he's talking about is destroying the lives of the black people and white people and brown people that live in the area. Pull up the next graphic, please. All right, and this uh, goes on. This is what's happening in Minneapolis. So left-wing activists mob a Minneapolis council member. This is a bit earlier. And it says here, a well-known left-wing activist and a group of protesters recently mobbed a Minneapolis city council member's car until the elected official agreed to sign a list of demands, including a pledge to support Mayor Jacob wow. Frey's immediate resignation. Wow. So how in the world can that stand? now? Not only, wow. not only that, not only, it just never ends, but the, the city council member that they're, that they're uh, um, I guess, terrorizing, right. a black transgender, oh. a black transgender person no way. that they are terrorizing. So they are totally eating their own. And coercing, wow. coercing an agreement to a list of demands. Unbelievable. Black Lives Matter. I don't know how many times you I can it, say though. it. You, you they said are a terrorist violent yep. Marxist organization. I don't care that you say what they are standing for something good. You can stand for something good and still be a horrible person or a horrible organization. This is not to say that a person who disagrees with them think that black lives don't matter. Don't be stupid. Black lives matter, terrible organization. All lives matter. For, any, for anyone who donated to them, yeah, slap yourself, okay? <laughs> Just slap yourself now and get it over with. That's all I've got for this segment. All right, we're going to come back and we're going to take another peek at our on location. You maybe saw it last night if you were watching. We're going to show you another little clip when we come back. buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. Calling all farmers. Join us Friday, July 16th for Farmers Night at the Bismarck Bucks. The Bucks take on the Frisco Fighters with a 6.05 p.m. kickoff and we'll highlight our friends at Farm Rescue as we help raise money to support our farmers around the region. For more information on tickets, please visit BismarckBucks.com. Get your free general admission tickets today. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. 
you got to know how to fold them if you want to hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Hey, 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 we're back. It's No Apologies. And this segment we have on location. We had our first one last night, and we are going out to various locales and just talking to people, um, sort of encouraging them to come and ask questions or debate or whatever they want to do, give their opinion. And so we have another clip tonight, a couple of young gentlemen, very entertaining. Our on location uh, this week is from Luft. That's my bar. I get to promote it because it's an actual proper time to do that. Right. It's downtown Bismarck, rooftop bar, wonderful place. This is where we met these gentlemen and let's just let it roll. Vaccinations for COVID. Yeah, Everyone okay. should get them. Only people that have not had COVID should get it or it doesn't really matter, leave it up to the individual. Definitely leave it up to the individual. All right. My Do you agree? Belief, I don't think anyone should get them. It's just toxic. Yeah, I, I think you should leave it up to the individual as well. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely against it. The whole the passports, you know, basically if I want to travel anywhere outside of the U.S. Yeah. or maybe other certain states at some point, yeah. like, what, what freedom is in that? Right. I mean, it's, it's never been required before for exactly. anything else. So yep. why all of a sudden now? And now it's required for a disease that has 0.1% mortality or 0.2, depending on what group you're in. Yeah, right. their age is like even well, littler. Yeah, well, your age, you're, you're more likely going to get hit by a car leaving exactly. tonight than you are to <laughs> die of COVID. Well, exactly. And, and on top of it, you know, let's let's talk about like, you know, what, what are the side effects going to be? I mean, I'm 25 years old. What are the Dude, it's repercussions? It. The new 10, 15 years right. Old, right? new mRNA vaccine? If I was a young person, I'd be like, no thanks. Uh, I want to see how, how that looks five years down the road before or I put more. that in my body. Yeah, yeah no exactly. Like and I'll hear these reports that, oh, you know, kids our age or adults our age, I should say, are getting enlarged hearts and, yep. you know, all kinds of different. I love right. that you know that. Yeah. <laughs> that makes my heart happy. It makes me happy that you're you're watching that stuff because I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, people are dropping dead from this in their 20s. This is right. not cool. So, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. What do you think? Let's uh, go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, when you left, did you find that it was more fun to be in Grand Forks than in Bismarck, or did you find? I mean, because I get the impression this is kind of like an old person, family, kids town, but you guys seem very happy. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like all those other places are great, but like when you come back to Bismarck, it's it's that hometown feel. You know, there's not it's not that high pressure. You know, you. you can still do your business and, and, and be successful, but yet you have that opportunity to lay back and, you know, kind of just sit I think, too, it depends what your priorities are. Like, me and him, so we've known each other since we were in fourth grade. Oh, so cool. Yeah, so, like, we're both slightly entrepreneurial, too. 
Yeah, so the thing is, is I think Bismarck's a good spot to like zone in. There's not a lot of distractions. It's not like nightlife is super high. Right. It's also not a college town either. Yeah. So like if you know what you want to do and you're trying to buckle down for a while, I think it's a really good spot because it's cheap. But like you also can zone in on your own, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So nice. you so you mentioned entrepreneurial. What are y'all what are y'all working on? Um, so, so I'm in the real estate industry. I got my license when I was 19. Wow. As a real estate agent, and then I, I'm also in the home improvement business. That's what I was meeting with you with, with ABCC and whatever. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, just kind of tying both those backgrounds together. Obviously, they complement you know, each other very well. Excellent. Yeah, we'll yeah. Yeah. So I've been basically like an, I guess, internet entrepreneur for five or six years now. So I started in like fitness. I sold like online fitness coaching plans and packages. And then that transitioned into like YouTube. And now I'm basically in like the men's dating slash self-help niche, if you will. So I have various products and services that I sell online. For, like, consulting. Good for you guys. Uh, That's fantastic. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. See, you do not need the nightlife here. It's just distracting. There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, a lot of stuff's been happening, obviously, both in the state and in the country. And we've got so many things specifically with COVID, but we have a, a lot of stuff regarding social justice, um, environmental justice. We've got a lot of spending. I mean, there I could go on and on about things that concern me. What are the top one or two concerns that you guys see um, how it affects you over the course of your lifetime, whether it's in the state or the federal government. <laughs> Give us some time to think of that. Yeah, it is juicy. You know, personally, I think it really starts from the top and obviously trickles its way down. But when I really look at it and what's happened in even just the last, you know, few months since the change in the new administration, I think it's government. I think that is really a big problem for us. I think there's so much overreach and it's only going to get worse, you know? I think seeing these lockdowns and COVID come through really just shows the true colors of what is really behind some of these political, you know, leaders, we'll call them, right, that are kind of, you know, directing all of us, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that's my biggest concern. I think, you know, good and bad, you know, I think COVID's opened people's eyes up to a lot of things, you know? I think we just kind of put on deaf ears or just didn't believe it actually happened, you know? Um, so I personally, I think that's really our biggest issue. At wow. For me, I personally think it's the rise of modern day feminism. Um, yes! Equality, but I personally believe it's the sexual liberation of basically corruption and toxicity. Um, <laughs> I totally agree with that. I, I also personally don't feel that it's a push for equality. I think it's either A, like... It's emasculation. Yeah, it's, it's emasculation, <laughs> and it's essentially a rise for female supremacy in a lot of areas. And if you look at the weakening of males and masculinity as a whole, <laughs> not only do statistically you can see that wow. testosterone rates are declining 1% per year, but they're essentially turning men into women. I literally this did that story. This reversed the gender dynamic roles, but not only that, this has made it much harder for men and women to be married, have quality relationships, and actually just be stable. Brilliant. I totally agree with that. I actually, we we had talked about that on the show, and I actually brought that up because I I absolutely agree with that. We talk about that a lot. Actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. It's toxic. It's terrible. Yeah. You know who Pajama Boy is? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, remember you didn't. Okay. Well, it's he was an advertisement during the Obama era for I don't know something they were trying to push socially, mm -hmm. but he was a he was probably a low testosterone. Uh, male okay. with his with his little latte and his little jammies and anyway that's I just I just thought maybe because it's it fits into what you were saying every about. television show the guys always the dork and the women's are always that I mean every think about it women are always the heroes and all those Hollywood things. Yep. think about all the movies you watch yep. music music industry I mean it, all of it I think too you're, you're sold freedom through expressed maximum sexuality but in actuality you now become a slave to your pleasures and it's like it's a total bait and switch that most people don't see. Wow. wow. This guy. I agree yeah. with this guy. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. Good stuff. Wow. Very good.
It was amazing. It was so much fun to talk to those guys, and it just... I love the depth of that conversation. <laughs> I, I am a slave to my pleasures. That is true. It was so good, though. They were terrific, and we want to thank them for uh, taking the time to talk to us, too, at Luft. And we've got the same two guys tomorrow night yeah. on for our On Location segment. Much, much more. <laughs> yeah. All right, when we come back, I'm going to do a little talking about door-to-door -door knocking. Stay with us. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, shuffle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's no apology. <laughs> That's my Matthew You know, so at some point, I'm just going to get all the right, giggles so right. bad that it's going to be, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Matthew McConaughey. That's what's all going right, on here. All right, all right. What you got? So I got a story about, and it's, it's fairly recent, uh, within the last probably 24, 48 hours, where it has been said that uh, Biden has decided and in his administration, in order to make sure that everybody gets vaccinated. He was a little mad about missing his goal, I think, on the 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, I know, Russ. So because of that, he's clearly overcompensating by saying that what they should do in the administration is they're going to knock on doors. Knock on doors and push the vaccine to people door to door. That's good. Not even kidding. Let's look at the first one. This is a Fox News article, and this is, says it's titled Biden admin launching door to door push to vaccinate Americans sparks major backlash as it should. And this is a pull quote from it. It says now we need to go community by community, neighborhood by neighborhood, and oftentimes door to door, literally knocking on doors to get help to the remaining people protected from the virus, Biden said. Now, to me, 
I think this is a little wrongheaded. And to me, I, I, it seems to me that the Biden administration, as with a lot of left policies, tends to swing that pendulum that you talk about a little too far, mm -hmm. um, to, in your case, to the left. And uh, because <laughs> of that, uh, they overplay their hand. And this seems like a classic case of that, too. Of course, circle back Saki had to double down on it. So let's hear what she had to say as well. Protected against the Delta variant. He will also stress how the administration will continue its effort to work with governors, local leaders, and across the public and private sector to get more Americans vaccinated by making vaccines available in more healthcare settings and respond to hotspots. The president will outline five areas his team is focused on to get more Americans vaccinated. One, uh, targeted community by community door-to-door -door outreach to get remaining Americans vaccinated by ensuring they have the information they need on how both safe and accessible the vaccine is. Two, a renewed emphasis on getting the vaccines to more primary care doctors and physicians, something that we've seen as a very successful tactic uh, with reaching groups uh, with lower vaccination rates in the past few months. Uh, three, stepped up ex efforts, which is... What could possibly go wrong? I mean, they're going to go door-to-door. -door. Got... What would you do? I've got two things to say. Okay. Number one, Jen, brilliant, brilliant. The reason more people aren't vaccinated is because of the lack of availability and the lack of information. They just don't know that the vaccine is available. You stick with that. That is fantastic. <laughs> right. Point lie. number two, come to my door. Please, <laughs> right. please come to my door and ask me to be vaccinated. Oh, I man. beg of you, Jen. I Send them, how, send them. How much fun would that be? Oh, this my is just Lord. It's silliness and it's, it's foolishness. It, it truly is. Now, I found another, I don't know how you say, do you say Epoch Times? or Epoch. Epoch Times? Okay. So there is an article that I found also in Epoch Times. So let's show that one here. So this one here says, um, younger Americans, Biden added, seemly per, seem particularly reluctant to get the vaccine. The president argued they're more at risk of contracting the Delta variant and that the strain is responsible for most new COVID-19 cases. Seems to me it should cause everyone to think twice, Biden said. <laughs> now, to me, uh, that seems like no truer words could be spoken. Uh, yeah, we are thinking twice. That's why we're not getting the vaccine. Yeah, well, there, and there's no substantiation for him saying that younger, younger people, people are more likely to get Delta variant. That's a lie. Precisely. That's a lie. Unless, unless he's saying that younger, because younger people are less frequently vaccinated and the unvaccinated are more likely to get Delta variant, you know, possibly there's a correlation there. But the whole, it's the it's typical the whole spin. premise is flawed. The spin. whole premise is flawed. So, okay, so I want to pull up the, um, the, the next one is... Uh, this is a this is another headline that I want you to see, but I want you to see the byline underneath it and what it says. So, Biden administration launching door to door push to vaccinate Americans sparks major backlash. But right underneath it is what I want you to see. It says it's the Beto O'Rourke of vaccine outreach. One critic <laughs> reacted. That made me laugh, and I was then looking on Twitter. So let's take a look at some of the reactions on Twitter. This is Dr. Willie Montague, and he says, knock on my door about getting vaxxed, and I'm going to give you a Bible and a constitution. <laughs> I love that guy already. He's running for office. This is, um, next one is from Poso. This is from Jack Posobiec. Uh, he says, Axios editor says people who object to door-to-door -door vaccines are national security threats. <laughs> And so, yes. And he's quoting yes. Dan Primack on the bottom. And if you see, I'm going to read this for you quick. We know that access and timing are why many people haven't gotten COVID vaccines who otherwise want them per surveys, et cetera. So, of course, it makes sense to go door to door offering them. Objecting to this is really objecting to the public health, economic health and national security, as Poso has uh, highlighted there, too. So that's their, that's their next line. Just get ready for that. Okay, moving on. This is uh, Matt Schlapp's wife, Mercedes. Mercedes Schlapp says, let me guess, will they also be, quote, registering voters? It's a waste of taxpayer dollars to send vaccine cheerleaders to knock on doors. I love that she said that because yes. you know that that's what this is all about. This is an opportunity for them to have paid people, paid by you, the taxpayers, going door to door 
and registering voters. You know that that's part of the deal of this. So Buck Sexton then, he uh, replies, so as per Joe Biden's vaccine plan, we should expect agents of the federal government or community organizers to knocking on people's doors, asking nicely to get vaccinated for a virus with a 99% survival rate. So these, yep. it's these, some and of these. Matt are, Schlapp is, well, you, you, know, um, you said Mayor Mercedes is his wife. He is the president or right. top dude for CPAC. Correct, yeah. for CPAC, yes. All right, so one more. Uh, I've got two more here left but th because they're so good, too. I love that these people are, are putting this up. Tim Young says, I don't think the going door to door to vaccinate Americans plan is going to work they, the way they think it will. <laughs> 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 and I think he's probably right on that. Um, Bobby T responds, a few weeks from now, when they see how awful this plays out, this is going to be what Saki has to say he's predicting. If you look back, it's actually the Republicans' idea for us to do door to door. You know that's oh, going to yeah. happen because that's what she's done. She tends to put it back and say, "Well, Trump said that," or the Republicans yes. say that. It's, it cracks me up. And then this last one. This is Matt Whitlock, and he says on Twitter. And going through t Twitter was so much fun for me to see what people had said because this was in you know 18 hours after all this stuff had happened. But whoever suggested that the best way to reach remaining vaccine skeptics was to talk about going door to door should be fired immediately. He's the guy who said it's the Beto O'Rourke of vaccine outreach. I love it. I do too. I love it. So Beto O'Rourke is now the new term to replace jumping the shark. Exactly. Precisely. Love it. It's a Beto. If, if you've done this, you have yeah, done a Beto. Don't Beto, Beto that stuff, no, do man. <laughs> don't, don't Beto it. So um, watch for this to die a quick death, I'm hoping, because I don't... Not me. You think it's good, you're looking forward to somebody coming to your door? I want them to come to my door. Don't kill it now. <laughs> Wait, please. I want this to and happen. And what would you say exactly to somebody coming to your door? Well, I would invite them in, and I would offer them a little bit of bourbon, and then we would have a great discussion. By the time they left, they would be ripping up their little cards and getting a different job and not sucking on the teat of federal government. I mean, come to my house. I don't really want to pay for this. I really don't want to pay for the whole door-to-door -door thing. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next time, tomorrow, we are going to talk to you about North Dakota's Health Freedom Rock Your Health Summit. We have two <laughs> amazing guests for tomorrow night, so join us then. All right. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.